So as the hype builds for the release of FIFA 19, I thought it would be a perfect moment to give you my take on some of the top English squads and how I predict the players from each of those squads, from the biggest teams that is, and yes I will do one for Charlton as well, but how those players are going to rate. I'm predicting that right now and we are going to start with the reigning English champions, Manchester City. Guys, today's video is sponsored by the incredible OneFootball app. This app is absolutely killing the game in the world of football apps right now, so if you haven't got it yet, head to the first link in the description and give it a cheeky download completely free of charge. You will not regret it. So starting off with the goalkeepers for Manchester City. First up, we've got Edison Marias, and as you can see, I've given him an 84 rating. I believe he was probably a bit of an underrated goalkeeper. Not many English people knew of him when he came to England last season when Pep signed him. Quite a young keeper, we weren't quite sure if he was going to be an improvement on Claudio Bravo and Joe Hart who Pep didn't really fancy after sort of experimenting with them and seeing them in training but he has been really revolutionary for Manchester City and was instrumental in their title winning year. I don't think he's quite better than his Brazilian counterpart Alisson in terms of uh, a FIFA rating and whether he's worthy of that yet. However, 84 rated for him I think is good and he'll definitely improve if he has a good season, maybe to an 85 or an 86 if he gets upgraded later on in the season. Claudio Bravo, only a 79 rating for him this year for me. I don't think he's really had much of a use at Man City. I think he's been very, very dodgy when he has played. Um, he's made a couple of little moments his, like I think penalty saves and uh, you know, a couple of decent acrobatic saves and stuff like that. However, he has gone from Barcelona to Manchester City's backup and it hasn't been a great ride for him, but he's still a decent goalkeeper and I'm going to give him 79. Kyle Walker, I actually believe, is becoming a little bit of a sort of Cesar Azpilicueta kind of defender in that he's bec becoming a bit versatile now. He can play wing back, he can play right back. I'm sure if you stuck him on the left, he could play left back. And obviously for England, he's playing in centre back in a three at the back as well. 85 rated for me, his pace, his power, his strength, his presence, and his passing range all are the makings of a really world-class defender. And I think he just deserves that rating increased by one or two from last FIFA. So 85 for Carl Walker. The Nilo is Carl Walker's backup, a decent player. Um, hasn't really had a lot to do at Manchester City. He's been Decent when he's been called upon, but I don't know if he's really had done anything to prove himself to get into the 80s. I think that he's a decent bit part player. He's quite versatile as well. He can play on the right or on the left. I would imagine him to be the kind of player that could sort of play in midfield as well if he needed to. But yeah, Danilo hasn't you know, appeared really as much as you'd like him to, to get him anywhere near the 80s. But 79, I think is decent. It's an improvement by one on last season's ultimate team rating. So I think that is fair considering he's been quietly consistent. Nicholas Otamendi, a player who does divide opinion in my, in my opinion. Yes, that is a correct English. And I think that's because he performs really well for Manchester City, but he's a bit brave, you know, he takes risks, and for Argentina, he hasn't been playing so well at the international level, so I, I think that's why people have mixed opinions about him, but there's no doubt that when he's playing well, he is a really, really solid defender, and I don't see any reason with the consistency that he was playing at for Manchester City last season, especially towards the back end, um, I don't see any reason why his rating should drop, so I'm going to keep an 85 rating for him, I think that's about his... I wouldn't say his peak, but that's about right for him. And, you know, he is susceptible to bad form and, and even better form. He, he is a form sort of defender. So um, 85 for me, but it could definitely change come January if they do updates. John Stones, 82 rated I've gone for him. That is purely because I feel he's gradually improving. Maybe not at the rate that we expected three, four years ago, maybe when, maybe when he came on the scene for Everton. However, I do think that he is improving under Pep Guardiola. I think he clearly showed at the World Cup that he is a really, really good defender in all aspects, you know, playing out from the back, passing with his feet, also the strength and the physicality, the physical side of it, um, scored a couple of headers as well. So he's improving as a player, but not enough to be up there with your Vincent Companies and your Nicholas Otamendi ratings. But yes, 82 for John Stones. And I definitely think this could be the season where we start to go, wow. And he could be looking at 84 by January, potentially, I think. Vincent Company, this might surprise a lot of people that I've put him as low as an 83, but he is not the player physically as I think he is in his mind, if that makes sense. The player from three, four years ago, where he was literally probably the best player and the, the best centre back in the Premier League, I think he can't quite do that because of his actual body limitations right now. However, he is clearly still a very classy defender who 
does rely a little bit too much in his old age on sort of speed and and commitment and bravery in his defending and that's why it's just not coming off for him as much anymore. You see him giving away more fouls. You see him giving away more sort of dangerous opportunities, letting people pass. And I just don't think he's quite the defender he once was. However, like I said, class is permanent. So 83, still a solid rating for the Manchester City centre-back. Yeah, Mangala isn't really one who we can we can read much into. He hasn't played a, lot of, a whole lot of football really in general for the last sort of season. And so 78, 79 is about right. I've gone for 79 because he's sort of in his prime, 27 years old. And um, I don't see any reason why he, he should be knocked down. I don't think he's played badly when he's played, but he's clearly not fancied as much by Guardiola. So maybe he needs to move and get some more game time. Interesting for sort of mid-table Premier League teams in, in career mode, maybe on FIFA. He might be a good one to sign. But 79 for me in, uh, in, in Mangala for the centre-back for Manchester City. But... He could be looking at going down if he stays at Manchester City and doesn't get much game time. I'm Rick Laporte. Very, very good signing, I think, from Athletic Bilbao. I don't think it was Sevilla. I think it was Athletic Bilbao. But anyway, he is a left foot centre back who uh, Pep Guardiola fancied that he needed one of those. And Laporte came into the picture. He played maybe about 10 games for Manchester City so far, maybe 12. Started playing at the beginning of this season as well and has looked very solid. Scored, actually, only the other day his debut goal in the league for Manchester City. I think he is one of the most promising young left-footed centre-backs in the world and I think that we could see him start to really be a mainstay alongside either Otamendi or Stones in, in, in the central defensive area for Manchester City this season and he's one to watch but 84 for now for Laporte. Fabian Delph is a player who I thought maybe a season or two ago that he would be outcast completely from Manchester City's plans. He was a midfielder, you know, in the shadow of De Bruyne, David Silva, Gundogan, these kinds of players, but a left-footed one. And Pep Guardiola saw that he had abilities, natural abilities, to be able to play left back, left wing back, and also jump into defensive midfield positions when he needs to. So he's a versatile player. He was quite important last season with Mendy being out for the majority of the season uh, for Manchester City's title winning campaign. So I think that he's really, really earned an 80 rating for this FIFA. I think that for England, he was quite a solid player as well when he did play. Um, he wasn't brilliant. He wasn't like a, a shining star in England, but he showed that he is has a bit of class about him and he is better than I think last season 78, 77 rating that he had. So 80 for me and a versatile player that is going to be really useful on the game as well. Benjamin Mendy has just about played three, four, five games, I think, for Manchester City. And that is because he suffered a really bad injury. But obviously, he played a little bit for France in the World Cup. And he just looks like such a solid player. This the beginning of this season, he's already got, I think, two assists or maybe even three. Um, his crossing is dangerous. He's quite young. He's got a really, really positive attitude. And I think that just just the performances for France and the beginning of the season for Manchester City has probably taken him from what I think he was rated before a 78 or 79 up to an 80. And he could be one of the best left backs in the world in seasons to come. Onto the midfield and Fernandinho, I think is like 34 now, something like that. But he is nonetheless improving. And I only see players like Fernandinho, players like James Milner as well doing this, where they're improving so much with age. And Fernandinho, I don't think he is worthy of any Anything less than an 86 rating. He is so quiet about his job, very Kante-esque in what he does, um, sweeping up the midfield, driving attacks forward, picking key passes, calming the game down, working space to get out of danger. And I just think he's a classy midfielder. He can play a little bit further back or a little bit further forward in the central of mid center of midfield for Man City. And um, yeah, what a player. 86 rated would be very, very fair for him. And I don't think 85 would be unfair, but... I think this guy is even underrated, even though he started to be rated, if that makes sense. Yeah, 86 for Fernandinho. Gundogan is a midfielder who hasn't probably had enough game time or as much game time as he may want for the sort of quality of player that he is. But maybe the game time he's getting under Pep is about right considering how injury prone he is. And he has had a bit of a funny spell at Manchester City with various injuries and stuff. But when he has been played and when he has been selected, he has been really, really classy. And perhaps it will be his time now that Kevin De Bruyne is injured to come into the picture and really cement his, his name in the team for, for a sustained period of time. But I see no reason why his rating should be dropped because even though it's been inconsistent, the amount of minutes he's been playing, when he has played, he has been very, very solid. He can play all across the midfield. I've put him as CDM for other positions, but he probably could be played in CAM 
as well on FIFA. So yeah, 85 for Gundogan, solid player. Don't see any reason for that to go down. And now we do talk about the Maverick, the Maestro, the midfield genius. Kevin De Bruyne, an outcast at Chelsea who knew that he would go on to Manchester City and become probably now the best midfielder in the world, if not probably in the top two or three, I think everybody on the planet that likes football would say. So 91 I've put for Kevin De Bruyne, which is, which is a crazy rating. It's like up there with like legends and stuff like that. But I think Kevin De Bruyne, having done it for two, three seasons now, has shown that his passing range and he, just the way he can strike a ball and his mind is just second to absolutely none in football in the mid in the midfield department of football in general so Kevin De Bruyne is one of the best players for me in the world and I think a 91 rating would be fair to reflect that of him David Silva 88 rated probably a little bit further away than some people might think from Kevin De Bruyne's rating I think they were almost equally important in Manchester City's title winning campaign last season but obviously we can't ignore that David Silva is a little bit older that he's losing a little bit of his physicality and his 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 sort of acrobaticness. I don't know if that's a word, but you know what I mean. So AC8 obviously still one of the best sort of classic Spanish midfielders that we've seen and grown to know in the last 10 years. But David Silva for me a little bit worse off rating wise than Kevin De Bruyne. But look, 88 rating is 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 still in the top sort of 20, maybe 25 players in the in the entire game. Maybe even less than that. So yeah, what a player. Um, I haven't put wing like right wing or left wing on his other positions, but I can imagine that they might. But for now, I just think he's been playing so consistently and well in midfield for Pep that I think central midfield and central attacking midfield are his two positions. But 88 for David Silva, I think that's fair. Zinchenko featured a little bit last season at the left back and left wing back position, but primarily, as he's a young player and that's where he's played at the youth, he has played in midfield. Um, so I think that Zinchenko, we still need to find out more about him and he needs to be a bit more consistent and get a little bit more game time for us to proper work out what his best position is. But I think he would probably say it's, it's, it's a midfielder, attacking midfielder. I don't see any reason why he should be a, like a gold card on ultimate team yet above a 75. But a 73 rating, I think, is a slight improvement on last season. He's, he's got some senior appearances now under his belt. And yeah, Zinchenko, 73 rated with a, a decent bit of versatility for, uh, for that you'd usually see for a midfielder there. Centre midfield, left back and central attacking midfield. Decent. Phil Foden, potentially one of England's biggest stars in years to come. I think he's about 18, 19 years old. And I think Pep Guardiola has gone on record recently and said that he considers Phil Foden to be one of the senior midfielders now at uh, Manchester City. 71 rating, I think I've I've quite fairly given him there because he has improved from his, his FIFA rating last season. I think he was about 68, 69, but he hasn't had enough game time, obviously, to, to get any more than that. So CM and CAM for him as well, a little bit similar to Zinchenko without the defensive um, versatility. But Phil Foden, watch this space. He could be at a 78, 79 rating only in January if he does feature for Manchester City and play well. Riyad Mahrez, one of the only, if not the only new signing for Manchester City and Pep Guardiola. 84 rating. I don't think he's done enough to go on to an 85 because he was an 84 last season when he played for Leicester. However, he's clearly a classy player. He's clearly got a little bit of flair and a little bit more than most wingers in the Premier League. So I have to put him in that sort of calibre, that 84 bracket, where he is clearly a classy player, but not quite a consistent sort of maybe, I don't know, Raheem Sterling last season kind of rating. So 84 rating, I think is fair. Can play left mid, right mid. Maybe I'm a bit mean to not put CAM on his uh, on his other positions little segment there as well. But I wouldn't be surprised if that does happen. But for now, right wing, right mid and left mid are his positions and 84 rating. That's what I think they'll give Mahrez to begin with. Bernardo Silva could quite easily exceed this and be an 85 because he has been so good when he has been called upon but he's not a consistent starter for Pep Guardiola, although he is probably the most integral squad rotation player, if that makes sense, in the whole squad, along with maybe Delph as well. But Bernardo Silva has shown bags and bags of quality. He signed from Monaco last season and people weren't sure whether he was going to play out wide or sort of more centrally in midfield coming forward. And it looks like he can play both of those equally as well. Uh, I don't see any reason why he, he should be like an 86 or an 87, but 
he could quite easily exceed my prediction of an 84 by maybe one rating. I don't see him any more than an 85, that's for sure. But Bernardo Silva, if he gets more game time this season, could be looking at those upper echelons, those 85s, 86s, but we shall see. Raheem Sterling has been improving his game in every aspect, season upon season, even since he was at Liverpool. So I don't see any reason why, and I, think, I feel like I keep saying don't see any reason why, so apologies if I've said that phrase about 10 times, but I don't see any reason why Raheem Sterling shouldn't be an 85 and be in that bracket of sort of world-class wingers now. He needs to improve on his finishing, we know that. He needs to improve his international goal scoring, but CF and right wing, I think the correct positions to put him in. CF, he plays a little bit for England, and right wing, obviously, for Pep is where he is most usually deployed. But he has an he has had an unbelievable scoring record for Manchester City. If he can just translate that into his international form, then he will be looking at probably an 86, 87 rating next season. But for now, 85 for Raheem. Leroy Sane is probably one of the prom most promising wingers in world football, along with Raheem Sterling. But he seems to have a little bit more class about his finishing, his end product, than Raheem Sterling does. However, that hasn't quite reflected in his goal scoring. Sterling has, Sterling has beaten him in goal scoring last season. So Sene, I don't think he's any worse than an 85. I don't think that just because he hasn't scored as many goals as Sterling, he needs to be a worse rating. However, they might give him like an 84. I'm not quite sure. It's a very, very close one again. I've put centre forward and right wing as his other positions because he can be deployed all across the front. But for me, Sané, one of the most promising talents in world football in 85. Really, really shook. He was left out the World Cup, by the way. But yeah, 85, I think is fair. And maybe by January, if he plays well, we will see him improve. Sergio Aguero is one of the world's best strikers. If not, I think many people would actually say he is the world's best striker. It's between him, Kane, Suarez, Lewandowski. That sort of calibre of player is who you talk about when you talk about Aguero in the same sentence as someone else. So Aguero, 89. I don't see why he should not continue, continue to have his uh, rating from last season because he's just been sublime. Scored a hat-trick already in the Premier League, three goals this season, and obviously last year he got 20 plus goals. I'm not sure exactly how many, but he, he, he's been doing it season in, season out for about five, six, maybe even seven years in the Premier League now. I can't quite remember, but there's no reason why Aguero shouldn't be looking at a 90 rating if he can score like 10, 15 goals before January. Gabriel Jesus, I almost gave him an 82 rating because I don't think that his consistency has really been there for the last maybe five, six months. And he didn't really do that well in the World Cup either for Brazil. But he is clearly one of the world's best upcoming strikers. And I think Manchester City are very lucky to have him playing with Aguero and learning from Aguero will shape his career and will make him a better striker. 83 I think is fair, but maybe they'll drop him to 82. And let's hope in real life he can get some good form and maybe increase it back to an 83 or an 84 even maybe, depending on how many goals he gets uh, towards Christmas time. So 83 for Gabriel Jesus. And that is actually the last player. I know this video has probably been quite long. I feel like I've been talking a lot about each player. So um, yeah, I don't know if, if, uh, if you agree with me or disagree with me on a lot of these players. Make sure you leave your opinions and thoughts on each player or any players you particularly disagree with down in the comments or even if you agree with them. Leave your thoughts down in the comments and uh, stick around because the next, cl next club we will be doing will be Liverpool Football Club, probably Manchester City's closest Premier League champions or predicted rivals. So stick around for that. I'll see you with the next video and take care of yourselves and sweet.